Welcome to VMware vSAN Module 6 Deploy and Manage Course. In this module, we're going to discuss about how to manage hardware storage devices in VMware vSAN. The main objective of this module is to cover how to manage hardware storage devices, how to add a capacity to a storage disk group, how to add a host, how to take a host from a vSAN cluster. So everything related to storage devices and capacity we will we will go through in this module. Next, how to identify vCenter server alarms for vSAN events. This is very important because you need to know uh, is there any failure for the hard disk or any capacity growth. All these things we can uh, see uh, from vCenter server alarm. And the final one, how to configure fault domain. First one we're going to see is how to add a new host to the vSAN cluster. Adding a new host to a vSAN cluster is quite straightforward. You just need to ensure that host meets vSAN requirement or recommendation such as network interface and one cache tier and one capacity tier devices and also if the host need additional capacity then you have to add additional capacity uh, disk to the capacity tier. And the steps like VM kernel port for vSAN communications. These are the things to be considered before you are gonna add a host to a vSAN cluster. To add a new host to the vSAN cluster, go and right click on the data center or the folder or the vSAN cluster. Then click add host. Enter the host name or IP address of the host you would like to add here. Click next. Enter the credentials. Accept the security alert. Click next nest and complete the wizard now host is available inside the data center the next step is to add this host to the distributed switch for that go to networking select the distributed switch right click and add and manage host select add host Click Nest, add new host, select the recent host that we added, click OK, click Nest, assign uplink to one of the adapter, here VMNIC1 is going to be the uplink adapter. Select your uplink and click OK. Then complete the wizard. Now host has added to the distributed group. Next is to add VM kernel adapter. Go and click add VM kernel adapter from port group. Add host. Select the host that we added recently, host number 5. Then click OK. Click Nest. Select vSAN. This VM kernel adapter is going to be used for vSAN service. Use static IP network. Add IP address. Then click Nest. Complete the wizard. Now you added to distributed switch. You added VM kernel adapter and the host is outside the vSAN cluster. Next we are going to move the host to the vSAN cluster. For that Go to host and cluster, drag host number 5 to vSAN cluster. Now host 5 is added to vSAN cluster. Once you add a host to a vSAN cluster, the next part is to create a disk group and add the capacity and flash disk to be a part of this vSAN cluster. So let us see how to do this. Look at the recently added host and the disks are in use. You can see there is no disks is used for a VSAN data store compared to other host group. So let us go and create a disk group with the capacity and other hard disks available to this host. There is no cache tier is available. There is no device for a cache tier is available now. 
so you know when we create a disk group one cache disk and one capacity disk is mandatory as there is no flash disk we cannot create a disk group uh, here now so let us go to the host and mark one of the hard disk as a flash one so for that go to the host click storage devices and select one of the hard disk and mark as a flash disk click yes now go back to the vsan cluster and select disk management click the host host number 5 then add a disk group then now you can see a flash disk is available in the cache tier and two disks are available in the capacity tier select all and click create now add in disk group has been completed now let us go and verify the data store size the size we added should reflect there it is once to go and refresh you can see the capacity has increased to 199.92 GB next we're gonna see how to enter a EXSI host in a vSAN cluster to a maintenance mode for that right click on the host then click enter maintenance mode there are three modes you can enter a host in vSAN cluster into maintenance mode full data migration ensure accessibility and no data migration the first one in full data migration virtual SAN migrates all data that resides on this host this option results a large amount of data transfer and consumes the most time and resources the second option is virtual SAN ensures that all virtual machines on this host will remain accessible if the host is shut down or removed from the cluster after maintenance mode only partial data migration is required in this option and this is the default option the third one is no data migration so virtual SAN will not migrate any data from this host so some of the virtual machines uh, might become inaccessible if the host is shut down or removed from the cluster so these are the three options when you want to enter a host into a maintenance mode in a vSAN cluster Next, we're going to see how to add a disk group to an existing host in a vSAN cluster. For that, add the physical hard disk to the server. Here, we're going to work on host 1. Once you added the physical devices, the storage devices, go to storage adapter and rescan storage. This will bring the hard disk into EXSI inventory now you can see additional two disks are available in the storage devices when you look at the disk management of host one you can see there are total five hard disks available to host one and three of it is used for one of the disk group so two is available now let's go to host one and select one of the disks for flash tier then mark as a flash disk click yes now go to vSAN cluster again configure and disk management then select host one click to add a disk group select a flash disk and select a capacity disk click create now you can see a disk group is creating and adding the disk group to the vSAN cluster. The disk group creation has completed and added to the vSAN data store. So now let us go and check the capacity changes in data store. You can see the two disk group available to host one. Now go and click to data store and you can see it is 220 GB. So the capacity is added to the vSAN data store. Next, we're going to see how to add a disk 
to an existing disk group. I added one hard disk to host one. So once you did from your side, go to configure and go to storage adapter. Please scan for the new storage devices. Now the new storage devices is available under storage device. Go to storage device. You can see a new 25 GB hard disk is available in the list. This is the one I added just now. Now go to vSAN cluster, configure and disk management. Now go to host one and select one of the disk group where you want to add this new disk. I selected the disk group first one and click add a disk to the disk group. Select the 25 GB hard disk available. Click add. And you can see initializing disk to the vSAN cluster. Now go to the data store and see the capacity is increased to 244 GB. Next is how to remove a disk from a disk group. Go to vSAN cluster, configure, disk management. You can see we are going to remove one of the disk in a host 3 disk group. We have two capacity disk and one flash. I am going to remove one of the capacity disk. For that select the capacity disk. Then from all actions or you can remove the selected disk from the group. You have three options. You locate all data to other host or as we discussed when a machine is going to enter maintenance mode. You can see the disk has removed from the cluster. Next we are going to see how to delete a disk group. Go to vSAN cluster, configure and disk management. Here we are going to delete one of the disk group that available in host 1. Select the disk group you want to remove. Then go and remove the disk group. As I said before you have three options. These options are same when you exit, uh, sorry when you enter into a maintenance mode or when you delete a disk from a disk group or when you remove a disk group. Click delete. Now, the disk group is removing from the vSAN cluster. Now the disk group has removed completely from host1 and vSAN cluster. Next we are going to see how to remove a host from a vSAN cluster. Select the host you want to remove. Here it is host5. Enter into maintenance mode. We already explained about all the options for the host when you enter into the maintenance mode. Now go to configure disk management and remove the disk group. Now the disk group have removed completely. Next to the host and move the host out of the cluster. Now host5 is no more a part of the cluster and the vSAN configuration has updated with the remaining host. Next I am going to show you how to identify vSAN related error from VMware vCenter. vCenter will show you all the vSAN related issues, warnings and critical errors as an alarm in the summary. You will get the same result when you go to configure, when you go to monitor and check the health. You can run a test from here and you can check the health of a vSAN. But this will be, uh, you have to go and check the details. But here it will be notified if there is any critical error or warnings. And when you go to all issues from monitor, you can acknowledge the issues or you can reset to green if it is a non-issue or if it is 
not critical to uh, your production environment. Next, we're gonna talk about fault domain in VMware vSAN. A fault domain is a feature in structure to spread the components across the servers in separate computing rack. So when you create a virtual machine, VMDK is one of the object we apply storage policy. So when you put RAID 1, the VMDK gonna spread across EXSI host, different EXSI host and by that way if there is an EXSI failure, the virtual machine will continue working from other EXSI host as the copy of VMDK is available and a witness is running on another server. Just assume if all the EXSI hosts are running in a single rack or in a blade enclosure and if there is a failure to the blade enclosure then you will lose your application continuity. To protect a virtual machine from this, VMware vSAN fault to domain ensure that vSAN can spread the VMDK or the redundancy components across the servers in computing different computing rack. So we can say fault to domain 1 for one rack, fault to domain 2 for second rack and fault in 3 and 4. So when you create a virtual machine with a fault domain value is equal to 1, the virtual machine will keep a copy of VMDK in one fault domain and another copy of VMDK in another domain and it will keep the witness in the third domain. By this way your virtual machine will be protected from rack failures. To, cr to create a fault to, to domain, select vSAN cluster then go to configure. Below disk management you can see fault domain. From there, add a fault domain, give a name, either fault domain 1 or rack 1, something meaningful for your environment. Here I select two hosts for rack 1 and other two hosts for rack 2. And finally, rack 3 with uh, two hosts. The minimum number of uh, fault domain is 3 and it is recommended to start with uh, 4 uh, fault domain. Now we have 3 fault domains. Let us go to the virtual machine and see what is the disk placement status now. You can see the disk placement is rack 1, 2 and 3. So it is spreaded across different to meet if there is a rack failure and to continue the availability of a virtual machine. Thanks for watching this video. That's all about module 6 in VMware vSAN deploy and manage course.